Okay, um, I want to talk to you guys about something that um, kind of scared me. Um, I was watching this show about obesity in America. And um, just to get on record here, um, I'm approximately 5 foot, 5 inch tall. Um, last time I weighed myself, I weighed 212 pounds, which gives, gives me a BMI of 35.3. Now, a BMI is less than 18.5 is underweight, a BMI of 18.5 to 24.9 is normal, a BMI of 25 to 29.9 is overweight, and a BMI of 30 or greater is obese. So, I am obese. Kind of worried about that. But, um, I'm going to give you some statistics. I can't remember where I got the some of them at. Uh, the summer from the CDC, approximately 17% or 12.5 million of children and adolescents aged 2 to 19 years of age are obese in America. More than one third, 35.7% are obese. Um, and along with obesity is diabetes, um, not always 100% on, but you know, it's one of those, you know, if you are obese, you have a higher risk of um, 25.8 million children and adults in the United States. 8.3% of the population have diabetes. In 2007, diabetes contributed to a total of 231,404 deaths. Now, one of the reasons I find this really, really, really interesting is because in this... Um, political atmosphere. Um, the Obama organ, um, administration, there we go, sorry, but Blake for a second, is all about gun control. And when you're talking about, where was it, 231,404 deaths just to diabetes, that's a, a scary number, especially since, now, there are those, you know, just like in everything, those are those cases to where it's just nature and it sucks, but there are, the vast majority of are preventable and controllable due to controlling your diet and controlling things like this. Um, I just find it very fascinating that, you know, you're talking about something that, it, it exaggerated numbers, 10,000. That's not even a drop in water compared to 231,000. Okay, that's 10, over 10 times the amount of completely and totally preventable deaths without impeding on anybody's constitutional rights. Um... Now, let's talk numbers, because I hate to say this, but money is more influential in most people's lives than life, other people's lives. Obesity with costs an estimated $147 billion a year. Obesity costs $147 billion. That's just obesity. Medical costs for an obese person are approximately $1,429 more than that of a person on the weight. Diabetes costs approximately $174 billion by itself. So there's well over $200 billion of medical costs that can be prevented. According to the Brady campaign, the impacts of gun violence cost the U.S. says is $100 billion. So again, you're talking about something twice that, that's preventable, without impeding on somebody's constitutional rights. Which is the bigger issue here. The one that we can do things about that doesn't harm anybody, or the ones that we can do things about that will harm people. Um, so what I, what I 
what I would love to see is, and again, well, let me talk about this real quick. I am not one of the people who points fingers and blames other things for what I do. I got this way because of what I did to myself. Because I, and it's not. I refuse to change my eating habits when my lifestyle changed. I went from being a pretty decently active individual to one who's not as active anymore, and I did not change the way I eat, so I still eat with that same mentality. So, there's a cause of it. And also, what I eat, because I eat crap. I really do. Um, now, I'm not pointing the finger at Burger King. Oh, I like Burger King. It's not their fault. You know, it's mine. I'm the one who went there. I'm the one who ordered it. I'm the one who ate it. Um, just like with the gun control issue, there's a lot of pointing fingers and blaming at everybody else. Um, gun manufacturers, fast food um, places, they give people what they want. If people didn't want it, they wouldn't do it. Um, there's a really good um, thing I heard. Um, he's the CEO of one of the fast food chains. And he said, we put salads on our menu and gave people the choice to order something that was good for them. They didn't buy it, so we took it off the menu because it costs more for us to have all this food laying around that nobody wants. That's good business sense. Um, I don't blame Pepsi, I don't blame Coke for producing their products because I want them, I drink them, therefore they're going to make them. If I didn't want them and I didn't buy them, they wouldn't make them. Um, so, what I propose, or what I think should be, is obesity, diabetes, heart disease, gun control. Take personal responsibility for your actions. And make wise decisions. Because what I'm what I'm seeing, and I urge you to go and look up some of this information for yourself. Don't ever take my word for it. Look this information up for yourself. I'm just gonna use a cheeseburger. A cheeseburger in my hand is more lethal to myself and more costly to the American population than my handgun. Even my assault rifle. You know, because, to be honest, I use my guns responsibly. I don't use that cheeseburger responsibly. <laughs> I'm eating that thing. Um, and I'm very, very, very proud of my wife. Because she is going on this journey put it, to get healthier, and like anything else, you know, you have multiple reasons, and one of those is, to me, the best reason to do it, because she wants to get healthier, um, and it's, kind of scary to me that, you know, I'm there myself, you know, even though I am not, you know, I am, what, 10% or whatever the BMI rating thing is, over, you know, um, I'm pretty sure if I lost 20 pounds, I'd be there. So, I'm going to make an effort. I'm not promising anything because I don't do that because I don't make promises I can't, I know I can't keep. But I'm going to make a valid attempt to at least cut off 20 pounds. Now, um, something else is not you or me everyone else, so I guess you, sort of, um, we need to combat the social aspect of it, um, I believe a part of 
the situation we're in is um, we've normalized obesity. You know, you tell your kid, don't pick on that kid because he's overweight. Well, and, and I'm a believer of this because the things I've seen, you know, that has gone down and the converse effect of that is it's okay to be overweight. Yes and yeah. No, I mean yes. You shouldn't pick on a person a person because of their body their body structure. But you should also combat that as a health issue because that's what it truly is. And I believe that we have failed miserably in that. You know, we no longer say, "Hey, you know, we this is good." You no longer say things like, "Hey, you're fat. You need to go die." But we don't say, "Hey, you know." Because you're 20 pounds overweight, you're going to increase your chance of diabetes, you're going to increase your chance of heart attack, you're going to increase your chance of stroke, you're going to increase your chance of this and that and that. You know, I accept you for who you are and what you are, but you need to look at your life and determine if you want to live and see another 20 years or not. You know, because that's what I'm kind of looking at it myself. Um, I look at a lot of my life decisions and... I kind of wonder if it was possible to, like, you know, you ate a cheeseburger, so you're going to cut three days off of your life. Well, you just ate a whole pizza, so you're going to cut two days off your life. About how I would want to punch myself dead in the face for doing that. On the good side, you can drastically improve your health. By making small itty bitty changes, by being more cautious of what you eat and how much you eat, and by doing a little exercise here and there, you can cut 10% of your risk down, 20% of your risk down, 50% of your risk down. You know, and that's the thing that truly amazes me is I'm not saying it's easy to do, but it's easy to, or it's plain to see how little effort or little work does great things. You know, like literally losing 10 pounds off of my gut it can increase my life so much more. You know, so it's easy to to show and it's easy to see. Now doing it, that's the, uh, the hard part, you know, because it takes things that go against what you've learned, go against how you've lived for so long, you know, and it's a never-ending battle. Um, I like to use the analogy of drug addiction, alcoholism, you know, you fight it the same way. You know, once you make that decision, I'm going to eat more healthy that day one. You know, and that's when you start your life over. And this is my opinion, okay? For a long time, you stay away from as many temptations as you can. You know, you don't go down the candy aisle. You just don't go down. It no longer exists in your world. You know. Until you build up enough self-discipline and self-control. To where you can look at a candy bar. And be like. Okay it's a candy bar. You don't like. Ooh I want that. You know. You don't never take it. You know. But now you can. Open yourself up to that temptation. I have known alcoholics. Who can go into a bar. Sit down, order a glass of water, hang out with their friends for five or six hours, and never even want a beer. You know, because they have built up that level of control and self-discipline to where it's not even a question to them anymore. You know, it just doesn't exist. It, it, you know, they can smell it, they can see it, they can hear it, they can talk, talk to their friends, and the want's no longer there. So... I think I've yapped long enough.
Tchau, tchau.